Welcome to January's Lico Challenge. Happy MLK Day, everyone. Hope you got the day off. So today's problem is max number of K-sum pairs. You are given an integer array nums and an integer K. In one operation, you can pick two numbers from the array whose sum equals K and remove them from the array. Now return the maximum number of operations you can perform on the array. So this is worded very strangely, but basically what we want to do is find the number of pairs that we can take from our array that's going to equal a value k. And a couple intuitions that we need to take is first, for every number, there's only going to be one other possibility for it to equal k. Uh, so with that intuition, we can kind of re recall, okay, there's probably some sort of two-sum solution here. The next thing is these numbers aren't going to be unique. So there can be um, repeats. So one good object that we can use is like a counter object, right? Because we want to find out how many uh, possible pairs are there for each number. Uh, this example here, we can see that one and four is one pair and two and three is one pair. So that's going to be an output of two. Now, if we were to go through this array and um, count up all these numbers, we could find its opposite pair pretty easily. We just have to say K minus X, which is going to like for this number here, we want to see if there's a four in here, right? And because we can have repetitive numbers, what we should do is check to see what the um, minimum number of count between them is. So say that we had one here and we want to find a four. Um, we want to figure out, okay, well, how many ones do we have and how many fours do we have? Because we know that one could only be paired to four, but depending on how many there are, we have to take the minimum amount. Say that there were like three ones and five fours. Well, we could only pair that one to the um, three fours. The other two fours can't be used ever. So uh, we have to take the minimum out of that. So really all we have to do then is um, create a counter object, go through our counter object, find the pairs, and maybe have some sort of set to make sure that we don't recount um, uh, ones that we've already seen. So what I mean by that is if we already counted one and we found a four, then next time we see a four, we don't need to look at it anymore because that's going to that's gonna just double the answer. So let's start off by creating a counter object. What we could do is just say counter nums, and I'm going to call this C. And this is going to have a key value of the number itself and the number that, that it's appears in our list. Next, we'll have our um, outputs and we'll start with zero. And then we should also have like a visited or a scene set to make sure that we don't recount any of these nums. So for X in uh, the counter object, what do we want to do? We want to see, all right, can we find its pair? And what's its pair going to be? It's going to be K minus X, right? And we want to see if that's inside of our counter object. So if, um, well, first we want to say if x not in scene and k minus x in our uh, counter object then we want to add to our output the minimum between c and x and c k minus x uh, then we want to add these values into our scene set so that we make sure that we're not going to do them again so uh, x minus scene and k minus x. And this way we can make sure that we're not going to recount things. Now, this looks like it's going to work, but there is one edge case that it was not going to account for. So this works fine. Um, but what if we had a number that is relevant to itself? So what I mean by that is like, say we had three right here and the answer is six. Well, this wouldn't work then because what we would do is say, okay, for three, find how many threes we ha have, and that's going to be three, and that's actually not correct, right? Um, here, if we if, if number equals itself, then we actually find just how many numbers do we have, and we divide it by two and find the floor of that. Uh, so just to take care of that edge case, we can just say, all right, look, if x equals k minus x, then add to our output the uh, value of cx divided by 2. Find the floor of that. Otherwise, we can do this. And the rest remains the same. So this would work. It should be 1. Let's go ahead and submit that. 
and there we go accepted so uh there are some variations um of how to do this you could actually get rid of the scene set and just divide our output by two like this um but I, I just did this because i thought it was gonna be easier to understand and i wasn't sure if that took care of all the edge cases other than that this is really just a variation of the two sum problem and um yeah once you kind of get wrap your head around that i think like you can move away <laughs> You know, the very first intuition might be to do something recursively and you know, like pop off numbers and stuff, but you don't need to do any of that. We just need to find um, how the, the number of these numbers, or the count of these numbers, because there's only going to be one pair for each number, uh, possible pair that's going to equal six. Okay, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.